Program Director, Your Excellency Dr. Alhaji Muhammadu Baumia, Vice President of the Fourth Republic of Ghana, representing His Excellency President Akufo Ado, Your Excellency President of Asanjo, former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Chairman of the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, Your Excellency President Mahamadou Isufu, leader and champion of the AFCFTA, former President of the uh, Republic of Niger, Honorable Minister Jean-Lucien uh, Basso Tonba, Minister of External Trade, representing His Excellency Felix Chisegedi Shilombo, President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and current chairperson of the Assembly of Heads of States and Government of the African Union. Honorable ministers that are here with us representing their heads of states, Professor Benedict Orama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Africa Bank, Honorable Ministers, Mr. Godwin Emifiele, Governor of the Central Bank of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and Chairman of the PAPS Governing Council, Governors of Central Banks that are with us today, Mr. Solomon Queno, Vice President of the African Development Bank, representing uh, President Adeshina, High Commissioners and Ambassadors, the CEO of PAPS, Mr. Mike Ogbalu, representatives of the private sector, CEOs of banks that are here with us today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today is a historic day. It is a milestone in the integration of our continent. The great liberation struggle heroes of our continent who over the last 60 years had expressed a vision of an integrated market in Africa, I am sure today are rejoicing because the dream of an integrated Africa is becoming a reality in our lifetime. And how fitting it is therefore that the commercial launch of the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System is taking place here in Ghana, a country that over many decades has long been at the intellectual and philosophical vanguard of Pan-Africanism. Today we have an opportunity to give practical meaning and practical content to this Pan-Africanism. PAPS is a pioneering effort at achieving a Pan-African payments and settlement system which will enable Africa to reduce reliance on third currencies and more importantly, it has the potential to significantly boost intra-Africa trade. I take this opportunity to commend my senior brother, Professor Benedict Orama, for his persistence and his vision. I commend the board of Africa Bank, the senior managers of Africa Bank, for leading their effort to turn the vision of the great liberation struggle heroes of our time, the vision of the founding mothers and fathers of the organization of African unity, this vision into a reality today. I also want to offer special gratitude to finance ministers and governors of central banks of the West African Monetary Zone for their support and cooperation in the piloting of PAPS. As you heard from Professor Orama, Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, and the Gambia were countries where the pilot was initiated and was successful. And following this successful piloting of the system, the AFCFTA Secretariat will continue to, to strongly support Africa's in Bank as PAPS is being rolled out to the rest of uh, the AU member states in order to reduce the cost of cross-border payments and to boost intra-Africa trade. 
As you heard earlier, the Assembly of Heads of States and Government of the African Union in Niamey in 2019 officially adopted PAPS as an instrument for implementation of the AFCFTA. And in this regard, we shall ensure that we have the appropriate regulatory framework within the legal architecture of the AFCFTA to ensure that payment systems and payments for the support of trade in Africa are legally embedded in the architecture of the African Union. When our heads of states convene uh, during their special session next month, special session that will focus on the AFCFTA and its implementation, myself and Professor Orama will have the opportunity to provide a progress report to the heads of states on the implementation of PAPS along with the implementation of the AFCFTA. The strong support of our heads of states cannot be underestimated. And in the, in the process of implementing PAPS, we therefore expect that our heads of states will equally provide strong leadership and political impasse and political impetus to ensure that we implement PAPS to its fullest extent. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our continent has for the last two years, as you know, borne the brunt of the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic that led to border closures and restrictions, logistical difficulties and disruptions in supply chains. In the midst of all of this, our heads of states took the bold decision that Africa must commence trading under these very, very difficult circumstances which were occasioned by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Since the commencement of trading under the AFCFTA began on the 1st of January 2021, significant progress has been achieved in a number of areas. We now have uh, 39 countries, 39 state parties who are uh, fully obliged to implement and accepted these obligations to implement the AFCFTA, making the AFCFTA the fastest instrument in the history of the African Union to be ratified since it was established in Durban in 2000. We also have made significant improvement in the area of establishing uh, common rules for uh, uh, rules of origin, as well as uh, local content requirements. We have activated and operationalized a dispute settlement mechanism, which is an important tool as we implement the AFCFTA and an important signal to African investors, African businesses, that Africa is committed to solving commercial trade and investment disputes uh, by, by rules that we ourselves as Africans have negotiated and committed ourselves to. We also co-convened with Africsim Bank in Durban under the leadership of President Obasanjo, co-convened uh, the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, which was very successful, was attended by over 11,000 participants and had a, a record of $42 billion of trade and non-trade related deals that were concluded. We continue to make significant strides on the implementation and negotiations of, uh, on the negotiations of the phase two issues, which covers uh, protocols on intellectual property rights, investment, competition policy, digital trade, and women and youth in trade. The above is a testament to the fact that momentum to implement the AFCFTA agreement, one of the flagship projects of Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, to achieve an integrated, an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa is indeed on course. With the launch of PAPS today, a critical tool of boosting intra-Africa trade, the implementation of the AFCFTA is well positioned to benefit the categories, very important segments of our society, small medium enterprises, young entrepreneurs, those Africans that are trading across borders by significantly reducing the cost of trading across borders in our continent. 
strong political will continues to be the bedrock of progress in the implementation of the AFCFTA. Our heads of states, as I mentioned earlier, continue to express their unwavering commitment and support, not only to me personally, but also to ensure that this continental market integration project does indeed see the results that we want to see, results which have long been in the annals of our history from May 1963. I therefore once again want to express my deep appreciation to our leaders, the heads of states and government, who continue to uh, ensure that this agreement is implemented effectively and expeditiously. In this regard, the attendance of President Isufu amongst us today, the champion of the AFCFTA, is testament to the commitment that our leaders have to market integration, industrial development, and improving the lives of Africans. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we start the year 2022, we expect to see robust trading under the AFCFTA. It is also the year in which, by most uh, uh, predictions, the disruptions that were occasioned by the pandemic will likely begin to ease, thus, end, uh, thus tending towards normalcy in economic and trading activities. The commercial rollout of the pubs today is therefore timely and is set to boost intra-Africa trade significantly by making the cost of cross-border payments less reliant on third currencies and is also set to save the continent up to $5 billion annually, which is the amount currency convertibility costs the African economy. With the implementation of the AFCFTA, we shall see an increase in trade transactions over the next years. This will in turn create greater demand for cost-effective payment services underpinning the important nexus between PAPS and the implementation of the AFCFTA. After Africs in Bank and the AFCFTA Secretariat, myself and Professor Orama have provided a progress report to the heads of states when they convene next month on the implementation of PAPS. It is our collective intention that PAPS will rapidly be rolled out to the entire continent for the benefit of not big corporations in Africa, not big businesses in Africa, but for the benefit of small medium enterprises, young entrepreneurs, small traders who trade across our borders. In conclusion, the Secretariat and myself, we remain committed to continued partnership with Africs in Bank and collaboration and other continental institutions to further develop tools that create an enabling environment for the successful implementation of the AFCFTA in order to achieve the economic transformation and industrialization that we want to see on our African continent. President Kholtata Mandela once said that it all seems impossible until it is done. Today, all of us as Africans should be proud that we've taken a milestone and that we've taken a greater and significant step in the implementation of the vision of the founding mothers and fathers of the Organization of African Unity to integrate our, country, our continent. I want to thank you very much for your attention.